Hey friends. So we're out here today in, uh, actually, in central Hong Kong. Somewhere a little bit different, somewhere new for us. We're only here for 24 hours. So we want to see what we can do in that 24 hours. We're going onwards and we're staying in the area. We're actually only in central Hong Kong for 24 hours. So let's just cram in as much as we can in that 24 hours. See what we can do and see what you guys can do. Maybe if you're on a transit, go in somewhere this side of the world. Uh, coming from the UK, coming from France, Germany, Switzerland, wherever. Coming this side, 24 hours in Hong Kong, what can you do? Um, so it could be a long video, because we're going to do a culmination of essentially half of today and half of tomorrow in one video. Um, so do stick around, and if it does get split up into two videos, please do uh, check that one out too. Um, if you guys do enjoy the video throughout, give us a thumbs up, do appreciate it, it really does help us out a lot. It'd be great if you could hit the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified when we post all new videos. Be prepared for a busy day, let's go. So our first issue of the day, uh, we're bringing you up to speed about an hour into our trip here to Hong Kong. Um, even the intro was about an hour in. Basically, we had to get from the airport to central Hong Kong. Uh, I'll pit down in the bottom where we're staying, and it is right by the center building, which is just there. Exposure's not great. Um, but it was a struggle for us, at least, to get from the airport. The actual, like, getting on the train from the airport to Hong Kong Central Station was fine. But then getting from Hong Kong Central Station to our hotel was just a bit of a pain, so it might be wise to just jump in a taxi. Um, we were speaking to the receptionist, he said it uh, is a meter taxi that starts at 27 Hong Kong dollars, and then it just goes on meter from there. So that might be best because the paths are not great to bring luggage on. Alternatively, you could just uh, bring a small suitcase and leave your big suitcase at the airport if there's luggage hold or something like that, but I'm not sure if that's a thing. But we have seen that in a few places. So if that is a thing, I kind of recommend that actually. That's a good idea. Um, we're going to make our way onto the subway station. We bought what is called an octopus card, and that is essentially like an oyster card uh, to just touch into the train station. It's like your contactless payment method, basically. So we thought it was going to be a subway. It's actually a tram. We put it into Google Maps, and Google Maps said get this one. So we're going four stops now to Murray Road for our first attraction of the day. And it's like a double-decker tram as well. Look at this. Four stops on the tram cost us three Hong Kong dollars, which at the moment is equivalent to about 30p, which isn't too bad. And they're everywhere. They're skinny. They are really skinny and really tall. They look like the night bath. They do, they do. <laughs> it's gonna be a bumpy ride. It wasn't actually that bad, bumpy, but now we're going to make our way to our first attraction. Uh, a little bit of a walk now, and uh, another form of transport maybe. We're not sure yet. So in order to get to where we need to go to, uh, we had to get something called the Peak Tram, which you see just popping into the back here, uh, underneath the Prudential building. And uh, we got off at the Murray. That was the stop that we came off at and it's been probably a five minute walk since there. If you're following directions, there are directional signs for it. So this is the peak tram, look. This is the first carriage. Oh, the first carriages, what they would have looked like. Colonized by uh, the Brits. Okay, special combo. Peak tram and sky terrace. $148, which is about £14, isn't it? About £14. That's for a return. Child, $74. Just for the peak tram is $88. Or for a child is $44. Those are return prices as well. Uh, you can get singles, but then you're stuck up there and you've got to walk yourself back down. So, well, you can get it, the bus, but that's 40 minutes. Okay. You heard that, so yeah, that's, that's a long one. It's insane views as you're coming up the mountain in here. 
off of the tram and literally straight into the gift shop. It's normally exit through the gift shop, but apparently not. Tons and tons of, when I say tons and tons of magnets, I mean these are the selection of magnets. This is cute. This is cute. This is cute. This is cute. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's cute. And then, even more. Little trinkets, key rings, everything that you could possibly want. Lots of those uh, cats that wave at you. Tons of those. And hopefully we can pay by card. It's like a whole thing here. So you've got loads going on, loads of different things. You've got Madame Two Swords, Hong Kong here. Um, this is going to be a Chinese guy or a Hong Kong guy. Don't know who he is. Benedict Cumberbatch. You can buy all your tickets there. I'm going to go and have a look at the map and see what's up here. Here. Where are we? We are here. P1. Okay, we're P1 at the moment. So that's that, that one's right there. Okay. And P2 is a ticket office for something. Ticket office for Selfie something. Studio. Oh, a selfie studio. What's that? That's a madness 3D adventure. Ground floor is a Marvel adventure lab. Auto center's closed. Ticket office is in the ground floor as well. That's the peak tram. And then you've got up, you've got that which is the Sky Terrace. We have bought a ticket for this, so we can get to that in a minute. Um, and then Madame Two Swords, which is just behind us as we showed you. And then you've got some food options as well. You've got Burger King, Wildfire, Bubba Gum, Pacific Coffee, uh, another restaurant, Gino's Gelatos, and Hong Kong Day. Mimi's Desserts. Right? Mimi's Desserts, okay. There we go, so we got some, we got some uh, <laughs> Mr. Sims old sweet shop. They are everywhere in the UK. Um, so where are we going to go? Should we go up? Because we got a few levels to go. We come up to the next level. We've got the Sky Terrace 428 there. So we'll get to there shortly. Cookie department, Marvel Adventure Lab. We're not going to do Marvel Adventure Lab because, to be honest, well, it doesn't look very good. Uh, Pacific Coffee, you've got few little uh, food areas in here. I think that ends down there. It does go round though, so. If you come outside, there's actually more out here than we anticipated. You've got a uh, Italian kitchen, Candelicious, Dong Dong Donkey. I don't know what that is. It's a shop, I think. Peak Galleria. There's another food place down there. Uh, Burger King's just inside there. Bubba Gump's will be inside there. Wildfire Pizza Bar. Um, this is the temporary queue for the peak tram, so it's normally like two, three hour wait sometimes. We actually only waited like 10 minutes for it, which is great. Uh, as I said, we're here at a funny time. Peak lookout down there. We came into the peak lookout. This is like a little uh, cutesy cafe restaurant. I, it kind of feels like the tavern on the green from Mr. Popper's Penguins. That's the vibes I'm getting here. Like the only privately owned part of Central Park or something in New York, you know. Um, but we've got a fabulous view, it's very smoggy. We're in Hong Kong, uh, so, you know, we can't get away from that, but you can see all the little islands that are popping out in the sea there, and they look fabulous. Um, it's very windy up here though, look, like, you can see the trees, the leaves on the trees are blowing a crazy amount. But this is cool up here, you know, it's a whole like tourist destination, really. But this is a cute little area. Sit and have a sit and have a drink. We are just gonna get a quick bite to eat. Because we haven't eaten since this morning properly. So see how uh, the food is here. It's quite expensive, by the way. Uh, it's like 20, 20 pound a burger. So this is what we've gone for, the pulled pork burger. With french fries you can get it with salad but i don't even know what salad is or how to spell it or anything so anywho um, this was about 20 pound i think wasn't too wasn't too bad in the grand scheme of it uh it came out in about five minutes so super duper quick 
Um, we're just waiting on a garlic naan bread as well. And Becky's stealing the chips, so I'm going to stop recording and eat them. If we're back out, we're going to go into the peak tower again. The peak lookout was just over there to the left. Um, we're going to go to the actual sky terrace in just a second. We were hoping to be here for sunset, but that's not till like seven o'clock and we've got something else that we want to get to at seven o'clock 24 hours in hong kong there's a few things that we're gonna sadly not be able to do properly these do look very very cute little uh puddings walnut sweet soup mixed bean soup lychee boba and tofu pudding interesting flavors not anything that i really fancy right now it's all tofu yeah very strange and then you can get like ice cool drinks and whatnot from here as well. So we came into here and we got these treats and we went for Bear in My Heart. It was so cute! It tastes amazing, it's like seven pounds something. Definitely cute. And now we're gonna go up to the Sky Terrace. Sky Terrace 428 it says. I don't know what the 428 means, is it 428 feet? Maybe? Hmm. And there's the views that we're gonna get, which you can see now obviously, but you can actually walk fully in like the mountain area. There's people up there, there's like trails that go through that. go in there but these are the kind of pictures that you can get it's like those 3d pictures that make it look like you're inside them so we're right at the very top we've probably got up like three or four flights at this point um, just getting in the queue for the sky terrace on the floor where they check your tickets you've got a bubble gum just behind me uh, you've got this uh, selfie studio thing as well um, and then you can and get your pictures down here that I'm assuming they're gonna try and take a few pictures of you when you get up. One thing I would say, uh, unless you're doing the Sky Terrace, because it's not included in the standard ticket, that's just the tram ticket up, it probably isn't actually worth doing, really. Um, it's been nice, like there's great views up here, and we haven't gone outside yet, so caveat in that, but do the Sky Terrace if you're coming up here, because otherwise it's just a shopping center and some food, really. So this is what it looks like. This is where we are at the moment. It's quite windy out here, so bear with whilst uh, the sound might get a little bit funky, but we're gonna be going around here. You see what I mean by like glorified shopping center though? Lots of people taking selfies. We're yeah. gonna be doing that in just a second. <laughs> All right, as we said. If you're not going to do the Sky Terrace, not sure it's worth it, but that Sky Terrace is insane. There's a weird like... It's like a wind tunnel here. Yeah. Can you put your hand over or your head over? As soon as you... Right, you've got this glass here, right? And then you put your hand there and there's loads of wind. You bring it in, it's not so windy. How strange. How very strange. Um, yeah, so you've got the entirety of Hong Kong visible there. Um, interestingly, it's such a strange place. Looking over into the distance and the horizon there, all of those buildings look exactly the same. All of them. Every skyscraper there looks exactly the same. Even these here, it's like they've built like three or four of each skyscraper, the apartment ones, and then like rather than changing them up. You've got the harbour just there, tons of cool skyscrapers, um, just it's Hong Kong. It's very smoggy up here. You can't see as far as you'd like to see. You can see the mountains, of course. It's pretty cool up here. So as you come up here you've got like these binocular things that you can uh, pay five Hong Kong dollars and take you, you get to look over the, the sites. You've got this guy taking uh, 
pro shop pictures up here. You got some just stunning views, as we said. So as we come round the other side, we've got the restaurant that we were eating at just a second ago. We were in one of those tables down there and we are overlooking the ocean now. We thought there was supposed to be a really like cutesy selfie spot up here with a, a heart that you could stand in and take a picture, but it's not here. So that is false advertising in my opinion, but you get some fantastic views both sides. You've got the container ships down there, which those aren't necessarily fantastic views in their own right, but still looks pretty insane. Uh, that's the shopping centre where we were. You got the Monopoly guy over there. There's a Monopoly. There's something to do with Monopoly over there in that thing. I saw it. It's like a Monopoly casino. Yeah, Monopoly Dreams casino. Uh, but it does look cute. It's like a little, a cute little terrace. Um, there's nothing really down the back here, but I don't know. It's a, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah and you can uh, get some fantastic views over Hong Kong. But other than those pictures, there's nothing out here at all. So that was pretty much as we expected. Uh, not necessarily something that's worth doing, coming up here at least, if you aren't gonna do the Sky Terrace, because this is just a shopping center with, well, not a lot really. These kind of things, few food areas, uh, and. That's pretty much it. But if you're going to do the Sky Terrace, and we would say you should do the Sky Terrace at least, um, I think it's a must do in Hong Kong you get those views of the harbour um, and the whole of Hong Kong, which looks incredible. So it's a must do, but you have to do the Sky Terrace. Don't do the tram and not do the Sky Terrace. So we're going to head back down the mountain now on the same tram that we came up on, the Peak Tram. Uh, this is the ticket that we purchased, it's the Peak Tram, plus we bought the ticket to the Sky Terrace earlier on, so return journey, just nice and easy. So now going back down the mountain, literally backwards down the mountain, takes a handful of seats in the front, it's the rest of to go down back. I'm holding this straight, by the way, and you can see how the angle is. Pretty crazy. Glass ceiling as well. And this is about like a 10 minute journey up and down, so it's relatively quick. One interesting thing we found in Hong Kong is a lot of these overpasses for people, like walkways. So you go up, take the escalator up, or you take the stairs up, and then you've got a walkway through buildings, linking buildings together, through shops, all sorts. You see just here, so we're going down this main road area, but we're gonna go using this walkway. Also, side note, this park looks really cute. So we're making our way to the central station to get the tube. We found the HSBC building. I don't know if it's like the HQ here in Hong Kong, but it's a pretty cool looking building. One in three people invest with HSBC. Oh yeah. Now I've got shutters on the escalator so you can't go up there or down there. That is, this is just, it's very sophisticated technology. So if you're ever looking for Central Station in Hong Kong, the HSBC building is there. You've got Ralph Lauren here, Standard Chartered's just there, and then there is Central Station. The Google Maps we found has been a little bit funky in terms of actually like getting us two places, but this looks really amazing. Like a cathedral type thing there, statue as well. So like we need to go and take a picture of this statue in just a second. So one thing we'd have come to realize, sadly, the hard way, you can't top up your octopus card, which is essentially the oyster card that I mentioned at the top of the video. Uh, you can't top that up by credit card or debit card or anything like that. It's cash only. So 
If you're coming to Hong Kong, be prepared for that uh, because it is by cash only. And I'm going to emphasize that one more time for you. It is by cash only. Now, what you can do is add it to Apple Pay and you think, you think you're going to be able to top it up via credit card that way, but you can't because oh, yeah. the only way to use a credit card to top up Octopus in Apple Pay is via a Hong Kong issued card. So once again, you can only top up your Octopus card by cash. Don't add it to Apple Pay, whatever you do, you will lose all of the balance on there that you paid for a deposit, and the deposit I think is like 50 Hong Kong dollars. So just don't do it, don't do it at all. Uh, we've come on the tube line anyway. Uh, we came on the central line. I think it's the central line. What is it? Is it the central line? It's red, it's like the central line in the UK, in London. Uh, anyway, it's the red line. Uh, we come from central even to Tinsei, I don't know where it is. I'm gonna put it in the bottom corner because it's just so much easier for me to say. I'm gonna put it in the bottom corner uh, and that's where we have come to. Now we can walk because we're on the other side of the harbor now, other side of the river, and we're gonna go and see a really cool thing that I've been waiting to see for a long, long time. And we get a good view of the city this way. And this looks like a pretty fancy pants area as well. Like, this looks like the old town area. You know, I think before we were in like the hustle and bustle, the banking district when we did the tram area because we had HSBC, we had Standard Chartered, we had Bank of America, all of those things there. Uh, and now I think we're in the more like old school area of Hong Kong. And it's nice, I'll show you. Lots of neon, all of like the neon signs you've got little Chinese lanterns outside the restaurants oh this looks like a nice restaurant I'm also subconsciously looking out for a restaurant for later this evening so we can eat as well so this is what we were saying about. It's just like a really cutesy kind of area. It looks it, it, kind of getting a little bit stereotypical here, but it does look a little bit like Chinatown in London. It's got that kind of feeling to it. Um, loads of loads of restaurants, loads of lights, and you know big marquees for the restaurants that they're really trying to entice you in to try the food. But obviously that happens with any restaurant. It's just it's got that kind of feeling to them. So just walking at the moment, walking through like, they're not really back alleys or anything like that, um, but we're walking, we're making our way to a park. I don't know it is. It's called Sim Sha Sui Waterfront Park. Uh, we did just put that in Google Maps and we've actually managed to make our way pretty much all the way here with that. Google Maps, it's touch and go. When you're not in like a super, super crowded area, Google Maps is fine. When you get into somewhere that's like a little bit tighter, all the buildings are really close together, it starts to struggle because it can't pick up your location properly. I don't know if that's just, you know, the way we've configured our phones over here or whatever, because we just used, um, uh, we used an app called Air Arlo. Again, I'll put this in the bottom corner as well, and I will put that down in the description. And that gave us an eSIM for our iPhones. We've got fairly up-to-date iPhones, so you can do two SIMs. So we've got our UK numbers, so people can still text us on iMessage and whatnot. But we're also using data from a localized SIM card that way, which is great. Um, but yeah, so... This is the name of the place but Waterfront Park on the end rather than the centre. That's where we're heading at the moment. Uh, and that's also the name of the train station that we came to, or the tube station we came to. And we're, we're probably, we've been walking for about five minutes so far, and I think we've got like another five minutes until we're gonna get there. We've made it down to the Waterfront Park, and well, what a view. What a view we have of Hong Kong at the moment. It's a little bit overexposed, 
difficult to change it. Even in the iPhone, it's very difficult to, to do this. It's quite smoggy, so the light is bouncing off the smog. But we're hoping we see some really awesome views from here. So we're down here at basically Victoria Harbour, or opposite Victoria Harbour, and we've come for the Symphony of Light. Now this is the largest permanent light display in the world, actually. Uh, it's going to be projected and displayed on the buildings just behind us. And if you can see those in the image or not, uh, and we should get a fantastic view from where we are. <laughs> So that's the end of part one of our video, 24 hours in Hong Kong. Uh, and hopefully you guys have got a little bit of an idea of what it's like exploring Hong Kong so far. Um, how much of a pain it is for tourists to do it as well, especially if you're just bringing your credit card rather than bringing cash. It's basically impossible to do that. You need cash in Hong Kong. 
So we had a couple of pretty cool attractions today. Uh, we obviously saw the Peak Tram and the uh, the summit at the top, the lookout, which was pretty awesome. Seeing views all out over Hong Kong, um, taking you a little bit around the streets of Hong Kong, and then bringing you down to the Symphony of Lights here. This is, as we said, the biggest light show in the world, I think. That's what they announced prior to it starting. Um, what we would say, uh, we watched it outside the MoMA design store, which is just over my shoulder here. Um, and, you know, like a little bit further down there. And that was, it wasn't a bad spot at all. Um, but I don't know if the speakers weren't working there properly, so we couldn't hear the music properly. Um, but I'd say like the further you are down to the eye, the wheel, uh, would be the best because there's a lot more going on that direction. We initially started a little bit further up this way um, and the crowds were very light there so we made a move down a little bit further um, and you could see that's where it's starting to pick up and get busier. Uh, it starts at 8 o'clock every day. They do do a special tag for New Year's Eve I believe. Um, so you've got a few special things if you do come throughout the year. But it's good. It's it's been a fairly cool day, chill, couple of attractions. Uh, we're not trying to pack loads and loads of things in because uh, we will be back here eventually. Uh, but as we said, the further down you are, the better you will get. Uh, so hopefully you have enjoyed the video throughout and if you did give us a thumbs up do appreciate it it really does help us out a lot and it'd be great if you could hit the subscribe button bell icon to be notified when we post all new videos and we'll see you on the other side thanks